the next state that's going to be impacted by a tropical system is California. What's going on, guys? I'm certified meteorologist Jonathan Kegis. In this video, we're going to talk about Hurricane Hillary in the Pacific. Of course, a lot of this video also going to consist of the tropical waves that the Hurricane Center has highlighted, and then some more things that are kind of trying to get going in the Atlantic, but still not that conducive. Again, we'll touch on Hurricane Hillary that continues to rapidly intensify in the Pacific Basin. California going to be impacted this. It's not going to be a hurricane. There's a ton of misinformation associated with this system. Towards the end of the video, we are going to break that down. Hey, before we get into it, if you do want to stay updated on all things weather as we venture through the peak of hurricane season, you have to hit subscribe. Please do that. Hit that alert bell. You'll be notified anytime we post new content as well. Here we go. Here is the update to the tropical Atlantic Basin here. There are three waves the Hurricane Center has highlighted. We're going to go over each area individually as well. The two waves in the central and eastern Atlantic both have a 60% shot. The wave that is just getting going now, we were talking about it was kind of sneaky because it was invisible. Well, now it is showing where it's at, firing some thunderstorms north of the Dominican Republic towards the Turks and Caicos. Its development opportunity, though, resides in the central and western Gulf of Mexico. The Hurricane Center given that a 30% shot for development over the next several days. All right, so we're going to break all of this down. Right now, the bark, I think, is a little worse than its bite with all those blobs I just showed you on the screen here. There's a hodgepodge of spin, if you will, out in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. Again, that is a good thing. When there's multiple centers kind of competing to be the dominant center, that's always a good thing. It does in include higher in uncertainty as to where something goes, but as it does that it takes more time for these things to get organized so this is the one area of spin there's kind of like two or three little areas in here to watch the main one that the hurricane center does have highlighted is that area right there the second one is going to be further back towards Africa. That is where we have our secondary system. That's going to be our, our secondary invest that we have rolling through parts of the central and eastern Atlantic. Now, both of those highlighted for possible development by the National Hurricane Center. What I want to do now is show you a few models. And again, there's still a lot of dry, dusty air out here. So this is not a slam dunk that we do get named storms out of these. And I will show you again. Here is the model spin that I like to show. Meteorologically, this is called vorticity. It's that spin a couple thousand feet above your head. When you see that bright red ball, that means we're starting to get something to consolidate. The wind arrows, you want to see them. When, well, you don't want to see them go counterclockwise, but in turn, if you're a tropical system, that's what you're looking for anyway. Anyway, notice in here, we have this big, broad area of low pressure. So we do have counterclockwise movement. It is broad, and there are actually a couple of centers here as identified by the model here there's one about there there's one in here too note though how we kind of at least the gfs spits out two systems so that does develop by august 20th you're looking at a system in the eastern caribbean and then another piece of that elongated area of spin to kind of pop out in the central atlantic and then there's that third one there so the gfs is arguing that we're going to have three systems, three potential tropical depressions coming out of that main broad area that I just showed you. Now, we're going to focus on that wave that is going to increase rain chances for Florida this weekend. It's likely going to stay a weak wave, but it will increase rain chances for Florida. It's post Florida that we're looking at the potential for development. So you see those kind of red blotches there. You see that wind field coming in out of the southeast and then kind of kinking back towards the southwest. That is the tropical wave. And I'm going to bring this full again so you can kind of see what I'm talking about as I put this model back into motion. There is the spin. So again, certainly something to be paying attention to if you happen to be tuning in from the Gulf Coast of Texas, Corpus Christi area, Houston, Galveston, because this is one of those sneaky systems. And again, we talked about this in a previous video that a lot of times model guidance does not handle development too, too well when it's a weaker system like it is entering uh, perfect conditions in the Gulf of Mexico. So again, the GFS does have this as a pretty low grade system again, which would be awesome, by the way, for a weak tropical system to come in here because we desperately need to get rid of some of that heat in Texas and we desperately need rain in Texas again not rooting for anything strong of course but we could use the rain in Texas so we're hoping to keep that just low grade tropical moisture coming through for our friends in Texas and then as we go through the 25th there's not much out there so again I still believe 
other than that tropical wave that'll be moving through Florida and then eventually getting into the Gulf Coast, that the bark is worse than its bite at this time in the Atlantic. I'll show you why if you stick with me. Hit that thumbs up button if you're still with me, by the way. Euro has the same kind of story. That strung, strung out like a string bean kind of multiple centers there, elongated area of low pressure. And it does the same kind of deal. It spits out three storms out of that towards the Windward Islands, a little bit more aggressive with that leading storm. And again, I, I find that highly suspect. And again, the Euro has been doing some weird things in the main development region of the Atlantic. There's storm number two, then there's storm number three. Here is the tropical wave moving over Florida this weekend, and then eventually it also tries to develop it now. The Euro is becoming a little more on board. This model has not been on board with the tropical wave. So again, I mentioned in yesterday's video on the 16th that we wanted to watch trends on this because this is when you need to start latching on to see if the models are starting to realize, hey... There's a tropical wave out there, and hey, there's limited wind shear in the Gulf of Mexico. Okay, we might be able to, to get something developed here. So let me bring this back full to get my head out of the way, and I'm going to move this, uh, the camera view, closer to the Gulf of Mexico. That's the wrong way. But you see, again, this is still a low-end tropical system. It's likely still a tropical wave. We don't have those wind barbs kind of going counterclockwise. But still getting it close to extreme southwest Louisiana and into Texas as we get towards the 24th-ish time frame. So really early next week. So we're going to be watching that closely. Here is the deal. We have our two invests, our areas of investigation as designated by the National Hurricane Center. Look at where they are. Okay, the two L's mark the spot, but look at what they're going to have to contend with. If they jog north any little bit, which again, they're going to, we will have the opportunity to really ingest some dry, dusty air into those systems. Again, that's not good for the system. That's great for us. So I mentioned before that there's a bunch of different areas of spin kind of competing to be the dominant one right now. It's like a cage match going on into the central Atlantic. That's also going to have to fight off not the greatest environmental conditions. Again, that's good for us, bad for the storm. So still highly suspect of what goes on with these two entities and this one likely going to head up in that direction and it's a couple areas of spin as i showed you could come out of there we're watching it closely of course but i showed you before too there's that kind of sneaky development in the eastern caribbean that's typically a tropical cyclone graveyard and look at all the dust that's in here anyway i don't know i don't think it has a real good shot there but again it's august it's the peak of hurricane season we are watching it closely. All right, I want to show you the wind shear here. And this is going to be, again, the most concerning part for that system to develop, potentially anyway, in the Gulf of Mexico. Will there be enough time? That's really the main question because wind shear is on the lower side. Where we're looking for wind shear, it's the color here. And this is over the weekend. So as it emerges and leaves Florida, we start to see some of that shear back off. Here's early next week. So the system... As I bring this back full, my head keeps getting in the way. But the system would be right about here. So note the low wind shear associated with that. So it does have the proper ventilation to breathe. The water temperatures are extremely warm out here. So good environmental conditions, unfortunately. Again, we're seeing how many models actually latch onto this. There's model support for something weak. But again, a caution. A lot of times guidance does not really hone in on the strength of these things too well at this stage in the game for where this is headed. So we want to watch this closely. If you happen to be tuning in from the Gulf Coast of Texas, again, all fingers are crossed here for a nice surge of tropical moisture so we can get rid of some of the dry weather and the heat that we've been having. Also, though, look at all the wind shear that starts to develop through the Atlantic. Again, where we're looking for the colors here, that is where the wind shear is. So over the extreme southwest Atlantic, over just north of the main development region, it's doing better. Environment okay right in here. But now it looks like we may start to see the effects of El Nino really start to show up. And that would be awesome. Because that would mean that not only do we have some dry, dusty air for those storms, and again... If you've been with this channel for a while, I'm going to kind of go off on a tangent here. We mentioned about where was the dust in June. There was hardly any of it when we typically have a lot. That allowed Brett and Cindy to develop. Now we have 
way higher amounts of dust than we should for the middle and latter stages of August. So that is going to help to keep things, relatively speaking anyway, at bay. The dust is not the end-all be-all, but certainly it is a good thing to have if we're, again, tracking those storms. Speaking of tracking storms, again, I, I've been talking about the Eastern Pacific and all the rage has been the Eastern Pacific. We had Dora across all three basins of the hurricane. That rapidly intensified. Uh, we had a couple of more systems out there. Now we're all of a sudden onto Hillary, and you see that swirl out there. This one continues to rapidly intensify off the west coast, the Pacific coast of Mexico, and is expected to become a major hurricane here over the next several hours and continue through the next few days. Look at that, getting towards a Cat 4 hurricane off the coast of Cabo San Lucas and then working its way up the Baja Peninsula of Mexico. And then look at this. This is certainly something you don't see every day. A tropical storm expected to move towards the city of Los Angeles. Now, there's been a lot of misinformation about this. I talked about this earlier in the video that showed that people said, oh my gosh, a hurricane is coming to Southern California. There's going to be a lot of rain. There's going to be a little bit of wind. You see it there, the center of circulation crossing uh, the United States border there with a 60 mile per hour tropical storm. Now, we'll have to see if it ends up holding all of its tropical characteristics. It could be a post-tropical system. Certainly the latest update here from the National Hurricane Center while they did have it as a sub, as a post tropical system earlier they have updated it and they still believe it is going to be tropical at this time then it moves up into southern california and then eventually becoming post tropical as it kind of works towards the sierra nevadas again all of this is super super weird it's the first time since the cone has been implemented by the hurricane center back in the early 2000s that southern california has been in a cone so it's really weird uh that the, in, at least in the United States, we're talking about the West Coast being impacted before uh, with the tropical system before the Atlantic side, which is really, really weird. Once again, I want to show you some of the rainfall here really quick when it comes to California. And again, this could be a really ugly uh, kind of flood threat here. Look at this towards Joshua Tree National Park. I mean, this is a model forecast. A lot of times these are underdone because of the tropical nature of the rain that's falling. It comes down a lot heavier. But anywhere from four to six inches of rain towards Southern California, that bright yellow bullseye there that you see just to the east of San Diego, where they could pick up anywhere from two, four, five inches of rain. Nonetheless, this is a lot of heavy tropical rain falling on terrain. We could have some big time flash flooding. So while we are not going to get slammed with a hurricane, as some people are saying in Southern California, we are going to see a pretty high impact weather event come into Southern California with some very strong winds, again, potentially uh, gusting up to hurricane force. But it's going to be about the rain and the flash flood potential really as we move into the second half of this upcoming weekend and then into the early part of next week. Again, that is the expected rainfall there. And some of these numbers could be underdone uh, as we move into the early part of next week so some crazy stuff on the weather front there thank you guys so much for tuning in again we are keeping a close eye on those atlantic tropical waves especially again the antennas need to be up on that little tropical wave that's north of uh, the dominican republic and haiti right now watching the central and west gulf of mexico for potential shenanigans there but hoping for just uh hoping for just a nice low end moisture surge to help our friends out in texas from the heat and all of the lack of rain that we've been having uh not having this summer thank you guys so much for tuning in we'll catch you next time